Hello everyone, I'm Joyce. In this video, I will talk about my knowledge about teaching and learning in the English curriculum. I will start with the culturally inclusive pedagogy. Then I will talk about the ELD learning. Finally, I will show my understanding of the teaching and learning cycle in the English curriculum. The first thing I learned from this course is that the importance of culturally inclusive pedagogy that Jenny mentioned in the first lecture. Australia is a linguistically and culturally diverse country, so we may have children who are from different cultural backgrounds in the class. Some of them may come from the indigenous culture, some of them may come from Asian culture. It is necessary for the teachers to help these children get involved in the Australian culture and get other children to know and respect their cultures. That's why the teacher needs to build a culturally inclusive classroom where every child uh, respects each other's culture and everyone recognizes and appreciates own diversity. On the one hand, children from other cultures are able to feel safe and are more confident in the class. On the other hand, the pedagogy enables children to understand the importance of cultural diversity and inclusion. As Sam mentioned in the lecture, different Aboriginal groups have different values and cultures which make it difficult for teachers to teach it in the classroom. But based on the culturally inclusive pedagogy, it is easier for me to introduce the Aboriginal culture to children as they could be more respectful and responsive to a new culture that is different from their own culture. The second significant learning I want to talk about is that as a teacher, I need to pay more attention to EALD students. As I mentioned above, some children in the class are from different cultural backgrounds, and some of them use English as an additional language or dialect at home. These children need more learning than other children because they need to learn to communicate in English, learn about English, and learn other subjects through English. We need to be aware that EALD students need more help and support because they may have more difficulties in learning than other cho uh, children. That's why we need to consider EALD children when we do planning. In the practice, I need to know the backgrounds of the EALD children through observations and talking to parents so I can have an idea of their learning and how much I need to help them. I will also provide the explicit teaching and scaffolding if they need. And there are many other resources and pedagogies I learned from the lecture that I can use for teaching EALD children, which makes me feel supportive and more confident. The last point I will talk about is the teaching and learning cycle, which I think is very useful in English teaching. According to Darwinka, a uh, teaching and learning cycle is one of the key pedagogy practices for English curriculum and it helps children from all backgrounds to develop the knowledge and the skills of talking, listening, reading and writing in a supportive context. In this course, I develop a deep understanding of the teaching and the learning cycle on the workshop as we translated the four phases into I do, we do and you do. I have understood that I do means, for example, the teachers do the modeling like read aloud. And we do means that the teacher and the students do the dialogic reading together. And you do means children do the reading or writing independently. And I also understand that the TLC could be used both in a big unit plan and a single lesson. The teacher may just include one or two phases in one lesson. The implication for my teaching is that I could use the teaching and the learning cycle in my literacy lesson based on the Australian curriculum and make it flexible in my teaching and the planning. These three moments are my flexion, reflection of the course. Finally, I want to say thank you to my group members. Thank you for watching.